Hello friends, thank you for joining me and welcome back to the Ugly Cabin. In celebration of 3,000 subscribers, I thought I would come out here and answer a lot of your guys' questions. The main one being, how much did this thing cost and how did it get built? And I hope you'll stick around because I do have a book here and I've wrote down all your questions that you've been asking me and I'm going to answer them at the end of the video. Now the first thing I'll let you know is that this cabin is 8 feet by 16 feet. Now this whole thing started because I've been wanting for years a little place to get away. And my stepdad has had this old trailer sitting out here for years. He's never done anything with it. It's basically just rusting away. And I finally told him, I said, if you're not going to do anything with it, let me have it. Let me build a little shed on there and I'll have a little getaway. I think what makes it so ugly is the roll roofing that comes down the side. But one thing you got to understand is this thing cost me pretty much no money. Everything it took to build this thing was collected from family members. I'm lucky enough to come from a hillbilly family where there's always stuff laying around in the yard. Now I want to warn you, some of you might cringe because I am not a carpenter at all. This is not built the greatest, but I did the best I could with what I have. Now I'll show you a little bit on the outside. Now one thing you will notice is on the corners and in the middle I have these angle iron pieces here. And I got those from my cousin Mickey's house. He always has a bunch of metal laying around. And I really wanted to put these up just to give it some more support. I drilled holes in the angle iron. That way I can attach some screws to the wood on the inside. It'll help keep it stable in case I decide to hook this thing up to the truck and travel with it. Now on the sides here, I just got some old row roofing that I have nailed to the plywood that's on the inside. Probably not the best thing in the world, but I haven't had any leaks yet, knock on wood. Now I wanted to show you exactly how I did the top here. I found this old stainless steel piece and I cut it in half and the other half is actually underneath my wood stove down below. I cut a hole in the stainless steel the size of the pipe, brought it up through there. Now one way I keep it from leaking is I use high tip silicone and I did that also because I can't get a brush down in the top of that. So anytime I need to clean the pipe, I can just take a utility knife, cut all that old silicone off there, clean the pipe, shove it back through, put some more silicone down. As you can see, I've got that other piece of stainless steel here underneath the wood stove. And I had to put the wood stove on some cinder blocks because that pipe only went about that high above the roof and I wanted to give it a little bit more clearance. So I put it on top of this. This wood stove I only got for $100 and I believe it was from Sportsman's Gear, no, Sportsman'sGuide.com. This is a good little wood stove. It's not the greatest to cook on, but it does keep this place nice and warm. I think the coldest I've ever stayed out here, it was like 10 degrees outside and I got a thermometer over there and that day it kept it around 45 to 50, which isn't bad. Just get you a good sleeping bag and uh, yeah, you'll be fine. One of the first things I built in here was this little shelf here and I have a little curtain rod that goes across here in case I need to hang anything up. But I figured I'd put that in the corner. I, just, I normally stuff my wood underneath here and store it. What I'll do is I'll go out and I'll chop a bunch of wood, leave it in here. A lot of this wood has not been seasoned for as long as it probably should. Uh, probably only, you know, six or seven months. But I stack it all in here. That way it's ready, it's dry for whenever I come back out here. As soon as I got done with the frame, what I did was I took a bunch of old wood, and they're all different sizes. There's 1x6s, 2x6s, and 2x4s, and just line the inside of this cabin just to give it more of a rustic cabin feel. This thing may be pretty hideous on the outside, but to me, I think it looks pretty decent on the inside. Now, my original plan for the cabin was to have the bunk beds against the wall and this wood stove back in the corner just to give it more of an open design and plenty of room to move around. But I think for heating purposes, it, was, it would be better to have it in the middle. So that's why I have it right in the middle. Now, there's not much room to move around, but that's okay. Now since I am short on space, one thing I wanted to do was to have a table that folds down to give me a little bit more room in here when I'm not using it. And I just took a bunch of old door hinges and I screwed them to the wall. I put this piece of plywood here, attached it to that, and I'll show you how the table works here in just a second. Now, I've got a couple of 2x4s as legs and I have them on door hinges as well. So basically what I do is just pull it up, the legs come out, got, got a table. When I'm done, just fold them in. And I got a little bit more room to work in here. Now right here against the wall is where I got all my tools hanging. 
I guess I did have to spend some money. You know, I did have to buy nails and things like that. But I've got nails pretty much everywhere. One of the challenges I've had is, is lighting this place up pretty good for my videos. In a few of my videos, the lighting ain't so great. So I've got nails pretty much everywhere that I can hang lanterns on and things like that. Now, a couple of videos ago, you guys have uh, let me know that, hey, it's not safe to have propane lanterns in this cabin. Um, I appreciate the concern. I do have it ventilated. It's probably not as well ventilated as it should be, and I'll show you that right now. I just put these vents here in the front. I've got one up here and one down at the bottom. Now, it's probably better if I had one right here and then one on the other side of the cabin. That would probably be better, but I really don't know much about carpenter work and how things like that work. But I'll let you guys know that the propane heaters are normally only on when I'm filming. And I also have a carbon monoxide detector in here as well, so everything should be good. I think the only thing I have left to really show you is the bunk beds. I found some old 4x4s and some 2x4s and I just built this little frame here. Not the prettiest thing in the world, but as I've said before, I did the best I could with the knowledge I had, which isn't very much. But the top of it is part of the old deck that my parents tore down. It's not the most comfortable thing in the world. I think over time I may try to find like a, a mattress or something that might fit on there. But I wanted to make it to where I could sit up here because there's not really a lot of room to put chairs in here. And the kids can climb up there real easy. You know, they're young. They can do all that. But it's not bad. I got a place underneath here. I store things. And when I'm out here by myself, I use the top of this to throw all my stuff on. And for the most part, it's not bad. Now I know that this probably isn't right, but one thing I did to make sure that this was nice and strong when you're on it was just take a 2x4 and nail it underneath there just to give it a little support. I've got it on all the corners and on the bottom bunk as well. Well, if you're still with me, I appreciate it. Now's the time where I'm going to answer all your guys' questions that you've been sending to me. But before I do that, there is one more thing I need to let you know. This thing probably took about three months to build because I worked during the week. I'd come out here just a few hours every weekend and uh, just build it little by little. You guys can do it too. I've, I'm actually kind of lucky. I've, I'm lucky to be in a hillbilly family where they've got plenty of stuff laying around the yard. I could build something like this. You don't have to build it on a trailer. If you have a little piece of land somewhere, get on Craigslist. There, there's constant ads on there about uh, materials free. They just want them hauled away or really cheap and you can do this it ain't going to take a lot of money it's just going to take a lot of uh, sweat and patience that's the main thing patience which I'm not really known for but anybody can do this this isn't this is ugly I call it the ugly cabin that's what it is but it's just a nice place to get away but anyways it's time for the questions Richard Cranium asks what kind of work do you do well thank you for the question Richard I am a truck driver. I've been a truck driver for eight or nine years now. Before that, I was a roofer, and I was on top of a roof one day at 23 years old, making only about 12 bucks an hour. It was 110 degrees outside, and I just stood up and I was like, there's got to be something out there better for me. But, and that was truck driving. I decided to learn how to drive a truck. Best decision I ever made. I've been able to uh, provide for my family. Now, I'm not rich by any means. I don't think any truck driver is unless you own a trucking company, but I do pretty good. So thank you for the question. Chad D. Cost. I hope I didn't butcher your last name, buddy. Uh, what's your favorite part about making videos? Congrats and keep up the and keep the hard work coming. Thank you, Chad. I appreciate that. Um, my favorite part about making videos is it motivates me to get out here more. Before I started making videos, I probably stayed out here once a month. Another thing I love about making videos is you guys. You guys leaving me great comments. I appreciate it. I'm really surprised. Uh, I didn't think a lot of people would watch this, but we're growing. So, couldn't have done it without you guys. I appreciate it. Doug H. Congrats on 3K. Do you plan on adding on to the cabin or anything else on the property? Um, not really. This is not my permanent thing. Like, I have dreams of, you know, building a rustic cabin or a log cabin out in the woods somewhere. I don't have the money for that now, but 
this is just going to be something temporary. I don't plan on adding anything to it. I think it's fine the way it is. Uh, as far as the property goes, I don't personally own the property. My parents do. And I don't want to put anything permanent on something that isn't mine. One day I will have a piece of land with my own place. I hope anyways. Thank you for the question. Jeff Lindenberger, congrats. Guessing you're in the south, but hate to assume. So are you? <laughs> I get that a lot. I'm, I know I kind of have a southern drawl, if you will. But I am in southern Indiana, which it kind of is the south. It isn't really, but a lot of people in this area sound like this. And, and really, I, I talk a lot like my grandpa. I spent a lot of time with my grandpa. And I kind of picked up on his accent. He was from Florida. Northern Florida, not Miami. Northern Florida. So, thank you for the question. NH Hillbilly asks, How far is the cabin from where you live? Seems like you do a lot of quick overnighters there. Uh, I do do a lot of quick overnighters here now. It's about 10 minute drive from my house. I live in a small town that's in between two I wouldn't call them cities, but larger towns. And yeah, it's about a 10 minute drive out here. Wolf Patrick asks, I want to know if you ride and who with. I'm assuming you're talking about a motorcycle. Yes, I have a motorcycle. It is a 2005 Harley Davidson Fat Boy. Fat Boy riding a Fat Boy. Uh, I don't ride with anybody. I'm, uh, I like riding by myself. Uh, my stepdad, I ride with him every once in a while, but uh, Wolf Patrick, I guess you can say that I am a lone wolf. Greg Hens, Hensy, I hope uh, I hope I didn't butcher that. He just writes, "Where you at?" Well, right now I'm in the cabin, Greg. Nate T asks, "Congrats, brother. I'm certain you'll have to do more of the celebratory vids, but I do have a question. The ugly cabin." Did you need permits or is there a chance county can take it down? I own a tiny piece of land and just asking if you had any problems. I haven't had any problems with county. Uh, where this is at, it's kind of out there. County doesn't really mind and plus it's on a trailer so I can move it anytime I want. If I was to build something permanent that wouldn't be able to move, I'm sure I'd have to get proper permits and everything. But of course every county is different. And I live in more of a conservative state, so they don't really bother us much. Crafty Sublimer YT asks, if you could upgrade one part of the cabin, what would it be? Um, that's a great question. I don't know. I definitely think I need a better wood stove, uh, mostly for cooking, but this bunk bed probably could have been a better design. Maybe I could upgrade that. But really, I can't think of anything other than that. Mostly the wood stove. I need a better wood stove in here. But I will tell you one thing I plan on doing once it gets really warm out. I have a bunch more wood. I'm going to take off all of the row roofing that's on the side of the cabin. And I'm going to nail up all the wood that I found. It's going to look kind of like how it does on the inside. It's going to look on the outside. So it actually will look like a cabin. A cabin on wheels. Thank you for the question. Renee McDowell asks, love cooking on an open fire. Will you be doing that? Yeah, a couple of videos ago, uh, I believe it's called Freezing Bushcraft Camp. I did cook a ribeye over the fire, but there are going to be a lot more of those. I am going to get out in the woods more and make more videos out there. There's only so many ways that I can make a cabin video interesting. A lot of the YouTubers I watch, one thing they do is they're constantly building on or upgrading or building something new and that keeps you tuned in I don't think you guys would be ex excited about seeing me just come out here cook sleep wake up cook breakfast and then leave uh, there's a lot more things I can do outside so I will be doing a lot more outside bushcraft style videos stay tuned those will be coming I appreciate it Casey asks would you ever start a patreon I would love to support your channel Last time I was in the Ugly Cabin made a video, I, I talked to you guys about how money's nice, but I'm not doing it for the money. Um, 
I don't know. I'm just kind of weird when it comes to that. I'm the I'm kind of old school where if I can't get it myself, I don't need it. But you guys have uh, asked me. A couple people have asked me to create a PayPal and they donate. It's just hard for me to do that. I don't know why. Maybe I'm stubborn, or maybe I'm dumb. I don't know. But it's just kind of weird asking for things. What if I did start one? I'd probably let you guys know I did and explain to you that I'm not expecting anything, that it would just be for the people that wanted to give and that had been telling me that they'd love to give. But you'd probably, after that, you'd never see me. <clears throat> I feel like I'm losing my voice here. You'd probably never hear me ever mention it again. I'd probably just leave a link to it, but I would never bug you guys for anything. You guys have also been asking about shirts. I'm not really sure about how to go about doing that because I actually did look on teespring.com and I don't really want a middleman. The middleman just tells me that it's going to cost more money and I'm not interested in selling you guys a shirt for $25. I wouldn't buy a shirt for $25. I wouldn't expect you to do the same thing. Um, there are a couple of t-shirt companies in town, well in the city, in the city over. Um, and I talked to them and they normally charge like eight to nine bucks a shirt and I figured if I could sell them for 15 bucks that wouldn't be asking too much but that's probably still a ways down the road so I appreciate it though Nikki R asks how long have you been doing bushcraft and what's your favorite thing about it my story is probably quite different than most of the people that you probably watch as a kid we grew up very poor we lived in a trailer that was in the woods. It was 10 acres of woods and it was surrounded by hundreds of acres of land that we played on. I spent 90% of my childhood with my cousins out in them woods and we'd be there all day and we would be building, you know, forts and things like that. Stuff that, you know, you see in a lot of bushcraft videos today. And I spent a lot of time with my grandpa and he showed me a lot of this stuff because as poor as I was, he was even poorer than me growing up they basically lived in the woods and as the years go on you know every once in a while I get out there and uh, just sleep under the stars every once in a while I need to get away and uh, there's a few things in life that I love besides my family and that is motorcycles guitars and the outdoors so uh, I use those three things to uh, kind of clear my mind but uh, I understand you've probably seen my outside bushcraft video. I'm probably not the best at it. A lot of stuff I've learned just by watching other YouTubers. So I can't really say that I'm a legit bushcrafter if there even is one. But to me, bushcraft is more of a state of mind. It's not necessarily a set of techniques. It is good to know a lot. But it's just more of a state of mind to me. Bushcraft is just getting out in the woods... Uh, with with what you have you know the few tools that you have and just to create something out of it and to uh, get back in touch with nature I just love being outside so uh, you also asked what's your favorite thing about it just being outside um, one thing I like to do is, is my kids they're growing up during the you know the technology age which I understand and I allow them to play video games but there's a limit I do I don't want to say that I make them come out in the cabin with me lucky for me they, they love coming to the cabin they love going fishing and all that stuff I even took them hunting this year uh, the only problem is with Stacy my son he uh, we seen a few deers and I kept telling him anytime you see a deer I want you to just, just pretend like he's not there don't say anything and then we seen a buck come over the hill and all of a sudden he goes dad look away went the buck but that's okay um, they seem to, to have an interest in it so I don't really have to make them come out here so that's good I just need to get them off the phones and off the video games every once in a while but that's all the questions I have I hope I answered them all um, if not then in the next video I probably will do that next weekend I am going out in the woods and doing a little bushcraft video but I wanted to take this time to thank you guys I'm kinda over I'm kind of overwhelmed. I, I'm, I hope I can keep up because you guys, you guys just keep subscribing. And I don't know what it is you like about these, but I do appreciate it. And if you haven't subscribed yet, please do.
Take care, guys. I'll see you on the next one.